Um, what I'd like to do is consider in turn, firstly the definition of the, the area, um, the aims of the research framework, how it was developed, how it's organised, lessons learned, um, the tricky one, how will the framework be maintained and enhanced, and finally, how applicable might this model be to other worlds, so heritage sites in this country and, and beyond. Um, the framework has been published as a hard copy and as a digital copy, um, and the digital copy can be downloaded from the website of the Derwent Valley Mills World Heritage Site. <laughs> Addresses there, and it will also be on my final slide too. Um, that's the front page, the website, and beware if you do visit the Derwent Valley World Mills World Heritage Site, don't post stones. Um, the study area um, is another linear site which poses many uh, interesting challenges to, uh, to management not least the host of partners involved and the large number of mill sites that were incorporated within this, um, this area. Um, this particular map shows the location of the area in central England, stretching for some 24 kilometres along the river Derwent from the outskirts of Derby, or the silk mill in fact, up to Matlock Bath. Um, this map shows the core area, defined by a red boundary, and then the wider buffer zone is defined in purple. It was inscribed on the World Heritage List in 2001, and that was fundamentally in recognition of its pivotal role in the development of the factory system and one of the key foci of the Industrial Revolution. And uh, bottom left, you see one of the uh, several uh, internationally important mill sites um, in the valley. This is the Massa Mill, built by Sir Richard Arkwright in 1783 with this imposing uh, frontispiece designed to impress. Um, so what, have been, what are the aims? Um, the aims were to prepare a research gender and strategy and that was partially in fulfilment of the UNESCO requirement that sites develop robust frameworks for future research. The development of a research framework was also stated as a key aim of the World Heritage Site Management Plan, top right, which was published just a couple of years ago. The aim, and this was discussed with the World Heritage Site and with Historic England, was to achieve this through stakeholder engagement. Um, and this <coughs> should be made with the partners rather than being done for them. That's a quote from uh, Duncan Wilson, um, CEO of HE. In the, in the forward to this volume. So that, that is the basic principle of the, of the framework that is done by the stakeholders rather than being imposed by a, a select body of, of academics. Um, it's also aim, we also aim to create a living document which may be reviewed and dated and, and updated periodically and I'll come on to that towards the end of, of this session. And one other aim was to create an agenda and strategy for the, the World Heritage Site, which could nest within the much wider East Midlands Historic Environment Research Framework. That's one which I worked on several years ago, again with um, Historic England funding, and uh, developed a framework for the wider East Midlands region, of which the Derwent Valley Mills World Heritage Site is part. So one aim was to, to mesh together the agenda aims and, and strategic objectives. In terms of its development, um, we relied heavily upon consultations with, with stakeholders. Um, the management structure comprised a steering group of about 15 people who were selected in order that the key organisations working within the, the Derma Valley were represented um, and to ensure that we had an good range of expertise covering um, uh, key aspects of the very broad cultural heritage of the, the Derwent Valley Mills. Um, and the steering group met at regular intervals and assisted in the, in the guidance and development of this, uh, of this uh, framework. We also built up a, what I call here, a specialist panel of some 30 or more other people with specialist skills in key areas. Um, people that we could um, 
refer to, um, pose questions of, and who would be able to assist us in our um, discussions of some of the more specialist areas of the, uh, of the Devon Valley's cultural heritage. As you'll see as the lecture unfolds, it's a very it covered a very broad range of topics. Uh, many of them, I have to admit, outside of my comfort zone, being fundamentally an Iron Age archaeologist, um, there is some Iron Age in the Durham Valley, but not enough, I say. <laughs> and, uh, there's not much to it either. But we did try to tease it out in some of our um, strategic objectives, and I, I could claim a vested interest. In that <laughs> point. Um, and then other kind of consultees. Um, the World Heritage Site um, Management Team has a very large contact list. Um, and uh, we use that to advertise the, um, the development of the strategy and, and we invited people to, to workshops via that list. Um, and that list was, was enhanced by recommendations made by members of the steering group and specialist panel. So at the end of the day, we were able to circulate about 400 people with particular interests in the, in the Derwent Valley Mills um, and uh, we invited them to, to workshops and we kept them up to date with progress and invited comments on drafts of the framework. So we kicked off with um, uh, a number of stakeholder workshops. The first one, you see a slide of the workshop in action on this, uh, this slide here. The first one was to focus on the agenda. The basic aim was to pose the question, what are the priorities for research? And, and we were really asking the audience from this point of view, um, what, what do you see as the key questions that need to be posed? Um, and you see on the, on the right hand side a group of uh, uh, a dozen or so people um, discussing in this particular occasion the issue of, of landscape and environment. Um, the second part of our framework was to develop a strategy um, and um, the question we were posing there was, okay we've got all these priorities, how are we going to advance understanding of these? That is much more difficult than posing questions. But some of the questions that were posed were effectively unanswerable, so we decided eventually maybe we would, we would leave those for another framework. <laughs> um, so we tried to come up eventually with questions that were realistic, that could theoretically be answered. Um, finally, um, uh, there's a question of dissemination. Um, uh, so we disseminated the draft agenda strategy for comment prior to final editing, um, which was by, by myself, and, um, and it was reviewed by a, a number of peer reviewers, specialists in, in the key subjects involved. Um, so in terms of the organisation of, uh, of the strategy. Um, we devised at the end of, the, uh, of these agenda workshops, we came up with a total of 11 agenda themes. Um, these included archaeology, but um, they did in fact encompass all aspects of the Derwent Valley's cultural heritage, and um, both, both tangible and intangible. And I've just included here a list of some of the key headings. I shan't go into, into any detail, but the aim is just to emphasise the enormous variety of themes that were, um, that were explored. So it's industry, trade, and settlement before the factory system, um, the Enlightenment, the Industrial Revolution, the issue of factory owners, landed gentry, and the middle classes, the urban and rural labour force, transport, power, public utilities, built environment, landscape and environment and national and global impacts of the Derwent Valley. So um, that was quite a, quite a list actually and um, it was a good job we had a, a good support team to assist us with that. Um, within these themes we defined a series of, of topics um, up to about 10 within each themes and I'll just give one example here. Um, theme 11, agenda theme 11 was the national and global impacts of developments in the Derwent Valley. Um, so that was the general headline, and within that we defined a series of, uh, of topics. And this topic has been strangely truncated, actually. I'm not quite sure what's happened to the PowerPoint here. Um, but um, uh, I don't know, can we... 
Doing the Gabelle, that is. 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 Doing the
but it took a long time <laughs> is the key point and I'm sure you're aware of that anyway um, I've shown the maths here, I won't go in, in, into them in detail, but we had a lot of contributors, um, altogether about 65 contributors, and editing those and liaising with them was a, an extremely time-consuming but very useful task, and I think in terms of lessons learned, if applied elsewhere, longer time scale, and uh, we need to think about, I think although we had a lot of useful feedback from the, um, from the writers, if we had had the opportunity for some sort of more grant allocation or bursary, particularly for those working in, in, in archaeological units, for example, that would certainly have eased the process of, of monitoring. Um, so that's something for something for the future.